Now, first impressions count for a lot, and it's easy to take one look at a movie poster and dismiss the entire film as just being fundamentally stupid. Plus, we've all been guilty of watching a movie and only engaging with it on a most basic, superficial level, only to realize years later that it actually boasted a subtle layer of thematic and narrative smarts. And that's what we're here to talk about today. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 dumb movies which are secretly smart. Number 10. Demolition Man Now, Demolition Man has been largely dismissed by the mainstream as just yet another of Sly Stallone's naff mid-90s action thrillers. But it's actually so much more than that. This sci-fi actioneer stars Stallone as LAPD Sergeant John Spartan, who is put into cryogenic storage after a showdown with the villainous Simon Phoenix, who kills numerous hostages yet gets them both in trouble. In 2023, Phoenix is thawed out for a parole hearing and escapes, prompting the hapless authorities who live in a dubious utopia where violence has been largely suppressed pressed to also unfree Spartan, hoping that his 90s brand of brutality will be able to bring Phoenix to justice. Though on the surface, Demolition Man might seem like genre schlock, it doesn't take much reading into the narrative to appreciate its satirical qualities. This idyllic future world where people engage in sex via VR headsets and no longer eat red meat is a clear jab at excessive political correctness weeding out humanity's survival instinct. But the film also gleefully pokes fun at notions of masculinity and that no matter how evolved we might feel as a contemporary society, we're never more than a few decades away from being seen as primitive. Some critics have argued that the film fails to reconcile its commitment to bonkers action with its smarter speculation on the future of humanity, but the end result is nevertheless decidedly more ambitious and indeed smarter than many are prepared to give it credit for. Number 9. Zoolander Zoolander is plain proof that it takes a sharp mind to write a movie that is both dumb and funny. The cult comedy of course revolves around dim-witted model Derek Zoolander, who in addition to struggling with his hot new rival, finds himself in involved in a brainwashing plot to assassinate the Prime Minister of Malaysia. It's entirely possible to watch Zoolander as a work of inspired stupidity and nothing more, especially as Stiller plays the title role relatively straight. But as a comprehensive satire of the fashion industry and all of its pomp and pretension, Zoolander becomes more than just a disposable studio comedy. Given the countless figures from the fashion industry who appear in the film, one suspects that Stiller may have downplayed the barbed nature of the comedy during its shooting, even if the end result is a savage yet playful stab at how vapid the whole thing truly is. Number 8. Commando Even big fans of Arnold Schwarzenegger's 1985 action vehicle Commando like to believe that they're laughing at the film rather than with it. But to be clear, this is not some so bad it's good disaster piece akin to Tommy Wiseau's The Room. Commando is an awesome movie that is completely aware of how awesome it is. Viewing the movie today, it's impossible to accept that it's anything less than an entirely self-aware satire of action movies from the period. It's inconceivable that the film's howlingly ridiculous plot, characters and one-liners are anything but a heightened jab at the cartoonish silliness of star vehicle action flick tropes. There's perhaps one moment where the film tips its hat to the audience a little too eagerly as well. As Arnold hurls grenades at his faceless fleet of enemies, the goons start backflipping through the air like they're in a Hot Shots movie. But otherwise, Commando does a fantastic job of playing itself just daft enough. A surface glimpse might suggest that Commando is a cheeseball action romp from Arnie's hot period, but it's clearly a much more switched-on film than it ever really gets credit for. Number 7. Step Brothers Writer-director Adam McKay is basically a master of taking bargain basement concepts and imbuing them with an eccentric intelligence which can fly over the heads of casual audiences completely. On the surface, Step Brothers might seem like yet another entry into the tired man-child comedy subgenre, but what separates this film from so many other similar efforts is its subtle underlayer of social commentary. To the most aloof observer, this is a broad studio comedy, with a pair of middle-aged men playing emotionally stunted versions of themselves, but it ultimately speaks to a wider trend in America over the last decade or so, where extended adolescence has seen less and less adults leaving home, securing steady jobs, entering relationships, and perhaps starting families and otherwise becoming functional members of society. McKay obviously doesn't push this angle too hard or in a particularly mean-spirited way, but as easy as it is to laugh at the pair's dopey shenanigans underneath the gags and exaggerated central performances, the film is saying something about adulthood in the 21st century. Number 6. Robocop There's an entire generation of kids who, quite quite irresponsibly were allowed to watch Paul Verhoeven's gloriously entertaining gore fest from an all too young age. That includes myself, I saw this way too young, and I had all the Robocop toys as a result. And as a young'un, Robocop functioned purely as a badass, stylish action flick in which a murdered police officer is brought back to life inside a robotic crime-fighting chassis. But in line with much of Verhoeven's filmography, and this won't be the last time that he appears on this list, Robocop takes a pulpy, silly concept and imbues it with a heap of searing social commentary. First and 
foremost, Robocop is a scathing critique of privatized police and the dangers of allowing corporations to get in bed with the government, which in our current state of the world couldn't seem much more relevant. And that's not to forget its eerily accurate portrayal of a bleak future Detroit, or its overarching mockery of a society obsessed with violence, which is rendered here in hilariously over-the-top extremes. In many ways, Robocop is a movie which has taken on a new life in more recent years, and viewed today, it's impossible for all but the youngest viewers to simply engage with it as an ass-kicking superhero origin story. Number 5. Josie and the Pussycats now, You'd be forgiven for assuming that Josie and the Pussycats was just another early 2000s teen comedy, especially with two of the lead roles being played by it girls of the period, Rachel Lee Cook and Tara Reid. Critics were largely indifferent to the film on initial release, with much scorn being directed towards its excessive product placement. However, this is to ignore that the movie itself is a send-up of the commercialization of the music industry at large, where marketing tends to dictate the art rather than the other way around. Indeed, barely a few moments pass in Josie and the Pussycats without some sort of product being shilled on the screen, for companies such as McDonald's, Target and Starbucks, but this quite ingeniously adds a meta-textual layer to the film's railing against art for the sake of commerce rather than for its own sake. Some have accused the filmmakers of being hypocritical, in being paid to promote products in a film criticizing the very same thing, but here's the kicker. The production didn't accept any money for its product placement, doing them entirely for the sake of a feature-length running gag. Now that is clever. Number 4. Starship Troopers Paul Verhoeven strikes again with this criminally misunderstood action satire, which rather loosely adapts the fantastic 1959 sci-fi war novel about humanity battling a race of aliens known as Bugs. Now naturally many got it into their heads that Verhoeven had made a staggeringly meat-headed pro-war, pro-military, pro-patriotism and pro-fascism movie, as though willfully ignoring the film's tongue-in-cheek oora tone. And as with Robocop, you'd be forgiven for thinking the movie made the military and war look cool if you were a kid, but viewing the film as an adult, only the most strident conservative could earnestly believe that this film was bolstering their politics. Nevertheless, the film's effects-driven mayhem and general cartoonish approach seemed to disguise the satirical overtones for many viewers, something which Verhoeven himself was actually surprised by. But rest assured, Starship Troopers isn't some simplistic blast on bug hunt, it is a damning indictment of US policy both foreign and domestic, where the country's youth are indoctrinated into fighting the good fight against the alien other. And as with Robocop, it ruthlessly mocks a country that fetishizes guns and violence to a horrifying extent. Number 3. Not Another Teen Movie A whole decade before he became Captain America, Chris Evans starred in this devastatingly funny send-up of classic high school comedies, albeit one that has been unfairly lumped in with other dot 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 movie movies. Not Another Teen Movie is not a film made in good taste by any means. There's an extended gag where a classroom gets showered in feces and Evan walks around with a banana sticking out of his ass at one point, so yeah, there's that. And though it's easy to dismiss a film like this as another broad, gross-out parody that has no staying power whatsoever, this is absolutely the best and smartest of all the comedies that followed Scary Movie's lead. Smartly picking She's All That as its primary target of mockery, a timeless ugly duckling story that will keep being told until the end of time, Not Another Teen Movie also keeps the topical period humour to a minimum while steering the comedy towards classic coming-of-age movies that we've all seen. And moreover, it isn't so much a mean-spirited takedown of these films as it is a loving ode to them, even while underlining their thorough absurdity and sometimes their rampant sexism. Possibly the smartest gags in the movie involve an extended third-act dance sequence, prompting one character to declare, you'd never guess that everyone at this school is a professional dancer, and a hysterical subversion of the cliched romantic airport reconciliation, where the doe-eyed love interests get together despite it being painfully clear that they're ill-suited for one another. Number 2. Crank High Voltage The first crank is a ludicrously entertaining action flick about hitman Chev Chelios, who is poisoned with a lethal drug which cuts off the victim's adrenaline and eventually stops their heart. In order to fight the poison, Chelios must keep his adrenaline flowing by putting himself in harm's way, getting high, getting laid, and anything else that can keep his pumper pumping. When a sequel was first announced, many groaned at the notion of the surprisingly solid first film getting a lazy cash in sequel, and it really did just seem like a cynical, brain dead attempt to milk the loony original concept, but Crank 2 High Voltage is anything but lazy. It is not merely just a self aware action film, but it damn near dares to be postmodern, freely riffing on its own frantic pace, and at one point even throwing up a nine seconds later title card, whilst delving into Chev's past through some surreal flashback sequences and homaging classic monster movies by having Chev grow supersized in hilarious low budget fashion complete with miniatures and cartoonish face masks. This is also a film where a guy cuts his nipple off as an act of contrition to his boss, where Chev shoves a shotgun up a guy's backside and where another character suffers from full body Tourette's. It has zero interest in appealing to good manners or good taste, but that has little bearing on its intelligence. It is a film that 
that gives the audience exactly what they want, whilst also venturing into straight up experimental filmmaking territory at times. At one point, we randomly cut away to a minor character from the first film, played by Dennis Reynolds himself, Glenn Howerton, who is seeking therapy after his run-in with Chelios, and just as he seems to come to an epiphany, a stray bullet flies through the window and kills him. It's completely unrelated to the rest of the movie, and bolsters that high voltage is about as far as you could come from a churned out sequel. So it leads us to ask the question, it's been over 10 years now, where's Crank 3D? And number one, Last Action Hero. Last Action Hero might be one of the most criminally underrated and underappreciated movies of the 1990s, an extremely ambitious satire of action movies and indeed Arnold Schwarzenegger himself, which mostly fell upon deaf ears upon its initial release. The problem was that Columbia Pictures marketed the movie as a straight up action flick rather than leaning into its meta qualities, and as a result, audiences and critics alike felt bamboozled by a film that was totally different. And unless you're a big Arnie fan, you'd be forgiven for just assuming that the movie was a brain-dead bust, given how infrequently it's talked about amongst its back catalogue. But it is a movie desperately in search of a critical re-evaluation, if only because it so brilliantly sends up action movie tropes, whilst also creating a genuinely involving buddy cop vibe on a stonking $85 million budget. There are so many inspired, devilishly smart moments in this movie, from Arnie starring in a fake trailer for his own action-packed Hamlet adaptation, to a rental store standee featuring Sylvester Stallone starring in Terminator 2, and Arnie instinctively firing some bullets into his closet because there's always a guy in there. It's just brilliant. The world just wasn't ready for this movie in 1993, coming merely two years after T2, but more than 25 years on, it endures as one of the most evocative, intelligent, and boundary-pushing action comedies of its decade. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 dumb movies which are secretly smart. I hope that you enjoy that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Instagram at RetroJ, but the O is a zero. Hope to see you over there. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Hope you're treating yourself well with love and respect, my friend, because you deserve all of the best things in life, like love, happiness, and success. And do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise, all right? You're a massive ledge, and I want you to go out there and smash it today. I believe in you. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.